questions for maintainers. Cool. All right. Um, before I begin, let me just check. Can you guys both see and hear me? And also, can you see the uh, the slides? Correct. Both or all. All right. Fantastic. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Justin Burke. I'm a software engineer at Google. I work in the uh, production security team. And um, I'm one of the um, contributors to the, uh, the uh, special interest group uh, specification. Uh, it's a working group which has um, been responsible for producing the specifications around um, the SPIFI ID, SPIFI SVID, um, the trust domain, the uh, workload API. And what we've been working on recently is the um, uh, federation uh, spec uh, spec specification that I want to tell you guys about. Um, just a moment, sorry. Um, before diving into the um, the new federation spec, I um, just want to recap. Um, the federation spec builds on, on top of the, um, the trust bundle uh, specification. And what that is, is a way for um, trust domains to um, advertise their uh, set of uh, certificates or keys, the root certificates or keys needed to authenticate identities in that trust domain. Um, and so we, we're building upon that in the, let's see here, let me advance the slides. All right, so the uh, SPIFI Federation spec um, aims to support cross domain interoperability. Um, this is around um, allowing one trust domain to authenticate identities of another trust domain um, while still maintaining administrative independence between the two trust domains. Um, I'm excited to hear that a number of the, the speakers earlier today have mentioned uh, interest in federation. And um, I, at the end, um, either um, at the end of this presentation or later today or an ongoing basis, um, I'm very much interested in hearing uh, the feedback uh, from those groups and anyone else interested in federation. Um, some example use cases. Um, for example, uh, so we have cross-organization uh, federation. So this is where one uh, trust domain, perhaps something that I'm running, needs to federate or, or access um, uh, workloads running in a completely different um, trust domain, such as a uh, API provider. Um, federation also applies within the same organization. For example, you can imagine having trust domains for a production um, set of, of workloads separate from the, the trust domain that operates on your, your corporate uh, machines or in some special IT trust domain and so on. So the SPIFI uh, Federation spec aims to have flexibility in, um, in the set of use cases it targets. And as part of that, that flexibility, what we've um, identified as, as one of the important um, elements to to the spec it is to have a unidirectional trust model. And this is uh, actually gonna be quite familiar to us when we think about the web, um, web PKI or, or web uh, security. When I use my web browser to access um, New York Times, for example, um, my, my web browser authenticates uh, the New York Times uh, system, but the, the reverse is not true, um, at least at the, at the protocol level. Uh, the New York Times server does not need to authenticate my web browser in order to serve its, its home page. And um, we, we think that this uh, flexibility is quite important because we don't necessarily expect um, all uh, relationships uh, with Federation to be bi-directional. As I mentioned, um, this is about authentication. So this is about um, providing the means for one trust domain to authenticate the identities uh, in a different, in a form trust domain. This is not about authorization. Um, federation, this federation spec right now does not address authorization and does leave that to the individual uh, implementations in individual trust domains. We are, however, addressing uh, what we are calling a, a full life cycle. So we address elements um, around how to bootstrap uh, trust between one trust domain and a foreign trust domain, how to distribute um, how to distribute uh, the information within, a, within my trust domain, for example, to my workloads so that they're able then to authenticate identities in a foreign trust domain. Um, and, and what I wanna emphasize here, and I'll get to an example in just a moment, is that um, we've identified what we believe are the, the core uh, elements that are required to be distributed within, a, within an environment. But the specification does not go down to the granular level of specifying how that information needs to be distributed within a trust domain. 
This is about interoperability between trust domains. We're staying away from details around within a trust domain. As part of the full life cycle, we also want to support the ability for trust domains to uh, rotate their, their uh, credentials. And so as part of this life cycle, we have an element in there that specifies how and when one trust domain should be contacting another trust domain to receive updates on that key material. And we do that through what we're calling profiles. So when one trust domain pulls down the trust bundle from a separate trust domain, we have the option right now of using either HTTPS authentication or Spiffy. There's trade-offs for both of these uh, systems. One, in the case of uh, HTTPS, it's a familiar system that re uh, relies on um, widely available key, um, root key material, whereas the Spiffy um, system allows you to have, um, not depend on that, um, uh, the root keys that are distributed elsewhere, it gives you the flexibility to have your own key material. Um, and I'll show you some more of that in just a moment. And oh, I should mention that um, the specification is um, undergoing revision and review right now. We welcome comments either on the Google Doc where we're working on this or in our uh, bi-weekly uh, meetings. And um, we expect um, uh, in the near future, we'll be posting a, a pull request to GitHub. So let me show you some example um, of, of what, what uh, the elements are here. So suppose that um, uh, I have a, a trust domain consisting of my control plane and my workloads, and I'd like to enable some of my workloads to, um, to interact with or federate with an API provider, a foreign trust domain. The first thing that the, the specific, specification covers is around um, an out-of-band distribution of bundle parameters. So this is around the distribution of what is the, what is the actual uh, foreign trust domain itself? Um, and then the second element is what is the bundle endpoint URL? So if I, as the API provider, uh, if the API provider wants to support federation, it needs to publish its uh, trust bundle at a, uh, at a well-known uh, and stable endpoint location. And that's this uh, bundle endpoint URL. And finally, the API provider needs to specify what, which profile it's using, HTTPS or Spiffy. Um, we're, we're doing this out of band because there are, we, we want to acknowledge that there are a wide variety of different um, preferred mechanisms for distributing this initial set of information. And going back to some of the, the examples that I talked about at the beginning, the use cases, if you're doing a, a federation between organizations, simply publishing to a well-known URL on your, your company's or the API provider's website in this case might be a sufficient way. Whereas if you're doing it within an organization, um, your preferred mechanism might be to, to publish this, this root information in an internal wiki or other uh, internal means. Once, this, um, once the bundle parameters have been distributed uh, from the API provider to the control plane, uh, the control plane uh, fetches the bundle endpoint. And what this does is um, sends, the API provider will send its root um, key material to the control plane, as well as some hints about its refresh, um, how, how frequently the control plane is expected to, to go back to that endpoint to receive updates to the root key material. With that information um, now at the control plane, um, it's, it's vital uh, to uh, distribute what we're calling a, a tuple or a pair of information both the trust domain and the trust bundle. Using these two pieces of information, whenever a workload wants to uh, federate or connect with, uh, in this case, the API provider, it indexes its map by the, by the trust domain of the API provider to find the, uh, the, the root key material or the trust bundle for that API provider. This allows us to have tight control over which set of credentials are allowed to uh, um, identify um, or, or be allowed to be uh, used for uh, authentication of the uh, a, uh, API provider. And so that happens here in, in step three, where the workloads reach out to the API provider. And rounding out the, um, the life cycle, um, the control plane needs to periodically refresh, uh, refetch the, uh, the trust bundle. Um, and at a high level, this is the, this is the uh, federation spec that we're working on. And again, this is aimed at providing um, 
the basics for how one trust domain federates with another without getting into uh, low-level granular details, um, which would over-specify how a specific trust domain handles its um, distribution of the, the pair of, for example, the trust domain name and trust bundle internally. And that's what I have for you.